Good morning. Since this coming Thursday will be Thanksgiving, I thought it'd be a good idea to celebrate Thanksgiving today. We believe at Zion that Thanksgiving involves both thanks and giving, and we know that they go hand in hand. So the major emphasis of today's service, even though it's a virtual service, is we're going to, it will be to express our thanks to God by giving him an offering. Because of the confusion, because of the pain, the inconvenience, because of the threat of the uh, COVID-19 virus, I thought it would be appropriate for us to have a special service, actually a special offering, uh, and give thanks for what God has done for us in order for us uh, at Zion, the Zion family, to truly give thanks to God for his provision and for his protection. So in four or five days from now, we're going to celebrate this national holiday that we call Thanksgiving Day. But the irony of it is, is that very little thanks is given on Thanksgiving Day. We're usually caught up in doing everything else but giving thanks on Thanksgiving Day. Typically, we're busy doing cleaning and preparing and cooking and eating and entertaining and uh, talking with our friends, watching football and wearing masks. Don't even get me started on wearing masks. Anyway, all kinds of things but giving thanks. And honestly, almost no thanks has been given on, the, on this national holiday we call Thanksgiving Day. The only thanks that seems to ever be given is maybe a quick prayer before uh, a big meal or a big shout out of thanks to our favorite football team. So today, what I want to do is I want you to make this Thanksgiving different and more meaningful. The Bible says that there are four ways that we can give thanks to God. And I want to talk about them today, and then I want you to practice them throughout uh, the coming days. I want you to do these four things to celebrate Thanksgiving Day. And if we're going to give thanks, here's the four ways. We're going to sing, pray, give, and share. So by singing to Him, praying to Him, giving to Him, and sharing our testimony about Him, we're going to look at these activities in the first way that you can give thanks to God uh, at Thanksgiving is by singing to him and uh, singing about him. The psalmist says in 147.7, sing out your thanks to him. Sing praises to our God. I want to ask you all to join me in reading Psalm 100. Would you read it out loud with me, please? Shout with joy to the Lord. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is good. He made us and we are his. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. Nothing seems to make us more aware, more quickly aware of his presence than by singing praises to God. When you sing a praise to God, you sense his presence like no other way. And that's why it's important for you to give thanks to God through your voice, through singing. Some of you, you're, if you're like my mother, uh, you're thinking, ah, well, I, I don't sing very well. Well, here's the good news. You don't have to sing very well. You just have to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And all of us can do that. Christianity is a singing faith. It's about using our voice to praise with our words and our voice. Did you know that there are more songs written about Jesus than even love songs? All you need um, to do is to, to open your mouth and, and make this joyful noise. But we all need to learn to sing praises by thanking God with our voice, giving thanks back to God and singing joyful praises to Him. Now, some people, when they come to Zion, they just come for the message. They intentionally come late. They don't see a need for the music part of the service. They just come in, they hear the message, and then they leave. But that's a huge mistake. That's a major faux pas. You're actually cheating yourself. See, once a week you ought to, uh, because you need that emotional expression that you get from, from uh, singing thanks to God. 
If you don't do that, actually your heart begins to shrivel. No one can be a healthy and mature Christian only listening, listening to sermons. You need both the expression from the message and the uh, expression through music. So the impression and the expression is sort of a right brain, left brain sort of thing. And you need both of them. If you don't involve yourself in the singing part of the worship, then you're, you're sort of emotionally starving or emotionally and spiritually starving yourself. Singing hymns or singing praise and worship songs emotionally renews and rejuvenates you. I've discovered that in those times when I feel like, uh, or not feel like singing, I just don't really want to sing, I just don't want to do this sort of thing. It's when that happens, that's when I need it most. Because maybe my heart's growing cold, I'm under a burden, I'm tired of fatigued, and I need to be renewed and restored. And singing sort of renews that, that um, my heart. It recharges me. Uh, because of the hectic schedule that I keep as a pastor, I, I'm typically driving from one emotional draining experience to another. And I'll, I'll, I'll often ask Siri or Alexa to start playing some sort of praise music that I can sing along with. And depending on the song, God can immediately renew and uh, restore my soul. And he does this through just the singing and the praising. Singing praise is also a great mood lifter. So if I'm a little tired or a little cranky, um, I just power that up and begin to sing and start feeling better. So this morning, if you're tired or you're cranky or uh, you're just not in a good spot, put on some music. Um, sing along with us as we, uh, as the worship team comes out and uh, leads us in worship. I'd like you to do that at this time. Thank you.
The second way you can give thanks to God at Thanksgiving is by praying. Praying to God. The psalmist says in 105, 1, Give thanks to the Lord and pray to Him. In Philippians 4, 6, it reads, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Now, it's difficult. This is a difficult, difficult one where it says, Don't worry about anything. That's hard to do unless you do the second part, and that is pray about everything. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. If you would pray as much as you worry, you'd have a whole lot less to worry about, right? So God says, don't worry, but start praying. Philippians 4, 6b uh, and 7 says, tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you will experience God's peace. See, first you got to tell him uh, what you need and then thank him for what he's already done for you. And then it goes on to say, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand, passes all understanding. And it says, then his peace will guard our hearts and our minds as we live in Christ Jesus. The Bible says you are to pray with gratitude, pray with thanksgiving. Now, those of you who are parents, you'll understand this. Um, You wouldn't like it very much if your children just made requests of you, right? Never express any sort of appreciation whatsoever. How would you feel if all, all your child ever said was, give me this, buy me that. Why can't I have this? I really want that. Can't you get it for me? What if they never stopped to say, thank you. Thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for what you've already given me. Well, it's the same with God. He wants you to make your requests to him. But he wants you to do it and be grateful about it. He says, when you ask, ask with thanksgiving, thanking him already, thanking him in advance and thanking him for what he's already done. The Bible says, be specific. The more specific you are with your prayers, the easier it is for you to know how and when God answers your prayer. God wants you to be specific. Don't just say, God, bless my life. What sort of blessing Do you want? Be specific. Is it health? Is it finances? Is it in a relationship? He doesn't want you to just say thanks for everything. That's pretty bland. Thank you for the whole world. Get specific with them. Count your blessings. When I say um, to my wife, I'm really grateful for you, she'd really rather have me say, I appreciate this about you. Be specific about what I'm grateful about for her and what she's done. So when you pray, the Bible says, express thanks through your prayer. There's a buddy of mine by the name of Bob Pfeiffer, and he requested prayer before surgery um, about a week ago or so. And he called me uh, last Tuesday night, and he told me that the surgery was a great success. And he just wanted to thank me. He was so grateful to God, but he's also grateful to Zion and our prayer team for all the prayers that went out. He's just so grateful and uh, for all the blessings. So today, as part of this service, uh, I want to have some prayer done for you. As a church family, um, we want to pray for those of you who are in need. Maybe you're discouraged or you're just worn out. Um, so first, I want you to tell Jesus what your problems are. Tell him what your deepest needs are. If you're hurt, If you're worried, if you're broken, if you're lost, if you have some grief, if your heart is broken, if your marriage is broken, if there's fear in your life, then passionately passionately tell God about your problems. Passionately tell God uh, and thank God for the good things that he's done in your life. There's always going to be bad things that are happening and there will always be uh, bad things that happen to you and in your family Uh, But still, there are many things that you can still be grateful for. And I'm going to ask Jennifer to pray with us now. God, David says to you, and I say to you, I waited patiently on you. You turned to me and heard my cry. Jesus, I'll, I'll admit, sometimes I am not patient. Sometimes I have not waited on you the way that I need to, the way that you are asking me to, the way that you would use me to grow me. God, I I just confess that. I am sorry, Lord. But Jesus, thank you that you hear my cry and that your face is turned 
towards me. Thank you that you are looking at me with just so much value, that you see me in such a special way. And God, not just me, but the people who are listening, God, that you are, that you are turned to them, that your face is toward them and you are hearing them. You are hearing them. God, I just, I want to lift up some people in our congregation right now, specifically by name, Lord, because they are dealing with just health concerns, um, cancer and, and COVID and surgery um, and eczema. There are just things that are happening that may, maybe in a normal time they could handle, but just right now it's just extra. It's just too much, Lord. And, and they are crying out to you, God. Will you, will you remind them that you are hearing them, that you hear them? Jesus, I want to lift up Julie. I, I know today she is having surgery, God, and I am just asking you to be with her, to, uh, that she would know without a shadow of a doubt that your presence never leaves her. God, I, I pray for Mary and Christine. I just, I know that this is a long season of suffering for them, just a long battle. And, and God, they are trying to keep the faith. They, I mean, they are trying to follow you, God. They are, they are trying to seek to you, God. Give them a patience to know that you are still with them, that you have not abandoned them, that you are for them, Lord. God, I pray for Jennifer and, and Karen and Michelle and, and those women, uh, along with Julie and Christine, are, are in a discipleship group, God, and they're meeting on Zoom because they can't meet in person. And God, I am just asking you, they, I mean, they're wanting to learn how to walk and how to follow you, God. And I am asking that, that you teach them. I'm just asking that you would just show up through them. And God, their leader, Cindy, Lord, bless her. Equip her, supernaturally fill her with your spirit so that she knows that you are with her and that you are using her. God, teach her how to encourage them, how to walk with them how to be long suffering with them, Lord. God, I thank you for Christian community. I just thank you that they have one another right now, that they are walking through similar walks and it's not easy, but they are not alone. They're not even alone because you don't leave them, but they're not alone because you have surrounded them with other women who are walking with them. And so God, as they pursue you, I mean, your word says, if we seek you, we will find you. So God, keep and give them strength so that they keep seeking you. Uh, and Lord, um, I lift up Joni and, and Laura and just, just the chronic health problems that they have, Lord. God, give wisdom to their doctors. I ask for healing in their bodies, Lord. And Jesus, I, there are so many people during this time who are... Their, their families are hurting, Lord. Their, Steph, her, her, dad is suffer, her dad is suffering, Lord, and um, walking his final days on earth. God, will you, will you just be there with them? Would, they, would you just comfort them? Would your peace that, that transcends understanding, would it, would it do that for them, Lord? God, I just asked for Val and similar, Lord. She, she just lost her brother. Her, her dad is not doing well. And God, it's long. It's getting long. And so I, I, I just, I refer back to Psalm 90. We want to wait patiently on you, Lord. But when we do, and teach us how to do that, but when we do, turn your face to, towards us. Turn towards us, God. Hear us. Hear vows cry for you, Lord. God, um, I desire to do your will. Your law was in, is within my heart. And Jesus, I'm, I'm asking for all of us that that would be the desire of our hearts, to do your will, Lord. That we would place your word on our hearts and it, out of that overflow, we would live. Because many are, many are going to come and see and put their trace, trust in you. And we, and we want to help them, Lord. We want to surround them. We want to love them. We want to encourage them. God, um, sometimes your will is kind of elusive, Lord. So I, I pray that you would show us and guide us. God, I just, I pray for your will for our country. 
for our president, presidents, for our leaders, for our governor. God, I, I am praying that we would first love you with all of our heart and soul and strength and mind and then love others as ourselves, And that, that we would go and then make disciples to tell other people, to show other people how to walk, tell, to tell other people how good you are. Jesus, I love you. Thank you for being on your throne. You are so worthy. You are worthy of everything I could ever offer you or give you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, the third way you can give thanks to God at Thanksgiving is by giving to him. Psalm 50, verse 14. Give an offering to show thanks to God. Give him what you promised. 2 Corinthians 9, 11 says, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. The Bible says that thanks and giving go together. So today, we're going to do this part. We're going to express our thanks to God today by actually giving to God. Deuteronomy 16, 11 says, Celebrate the harvest festival to honor the Lord your God by bringing him a free will offering in proportion to the blessing he has given to you. So, about 350 years ago, there was a group of people called the Pilgrims, and they decided to set aside a day in the fall of the year. And this is a time that they could express their thanks to God by bringing a special offering to him. By celebrating a banquet and sitting down and having fellowship together. Today, we call this time uh, Thanksgiving Day, and it's a national holiday. But 3,000 years before that, God told his people, the people, the children of Israel, and the, the people who were really true believers, to set aside a day in the fall. It's called Shavat, and it means weeks. In Exodus 34, 22, celebrate the festival of weeks, the first fruits of the wheat harvest, and the festival of the ingathering at the turn of the year. So he said, he's saying, celebrate the fe to, in order to celebrate the festival of weeks with the first fruits of the wheat of the harvest, this, th that we give it to the Lord. We bring an offering to the Lord. And it's done at the fall of the year. And they still do it. The Jewish people still do it. They do it to, to, in, in order to express their, their true heartfelt um, thanks. And then they also share a banquet and a meal. And unfortunately, with COVID, we can't do that right now. But I hope that you'll do it on your, uh, on your own um, on Thanksgiving. And I hope that, um, uh, that, it, that you have a, a great Thanksgiving and a great feast. But God told his people 3,000 years before the pilgrims that we need to do that. So I'm asking you to give a free will today. And I'm asking you and your family to pray about how much can you give? And we're going to ask that the offering give, be given uh, next week. In addition to your tithe, in addition to what you typically give. It's, a, it's an additional Thanksgiving offering. And since we're not meeting in, in, uh, in person um, for worship these days, and I can't actually have the ushers come around with the plate or have you come to the dock and, and drop your offering in the buckets, I'm going to instead... Um, have it set up uh, in the dock and in the uh, sanctuary that you could come into the front doors of the sanctuary and there'll be a plate up by the information booth and you could drop off your offering there or you could come into the dock into the lobby by the information booth there and drop it into one of the buckets. Uh, you can, of course, use your online giving through Give Plus. Or you can just send a U.S. mail to Zion and the, our address will be posted at the end of the service. It says this in 1 Chronicles 29. Now therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. O Lord, our God, all this abundance is from your hand and all is yours. The Hebrew people, the Jewish people, they gave out of, and they continue to give out of gratitude. They give out of thanksgiving their giving was a result of all the thanks that they have. It, it reflected their heart, not their checkbook, not how much they had, but how grateful they were. And at this time, 
before I ask Pastor Jason to pray with you, <clears throat> as we join together in seeking God right now, I want you to ask God how much God would have you give next week for this special offering. But I want to I offer up a simple prayer first. Lord, may our giving amplify our love and our obedience towards you. We joyous, joyously uh, dedicate this offering to you, Lord. Um, you are faithful and you are loving. We pray this in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we know that you are a gracious and abundant God, that you have blessed us in so many ways, even in the midst of COVID, in the midst of all the uncertainty, uh, God, you sustain. Lord, as we look at really asking the deeper question, Father, and that is that what is it that you want us to give sacrificially? Lord, we're reminded that giving cannot come out of scarcity. It has to come out of abundance. And Lord, you have abundantly given and you have abundantly blessed us. Help us to remember so that, Lord, instead of living in scarcity, we live in knowing how much you have provided, first through your Son, who you gave generously with heart wide open towards us, God. And all of this, as we look to see what you would have us do, Lord, I pray for every person who's listening or watching this right now, that they would seek you, God, that Holy Spirit, you would move in them, Help them to see and discern what it is that you would have them give as a step of faith, not out of fear, because God, you are a God who does not operate in fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. And so remind us, Holy Spirit, of how generous you have been and help us to be equally generous. Now, Lord, in all this, for everybody who's watching, every person comes from a different place. And so, Father, I pray that you would bless them, that you would give them eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts that are open. And that, Lord, as they consider what you would have them do, Lord, that we would be reminded just how good you are. Uh, thank you for all you've done and all you're doing in Zion and Clear Lake. Uh, and, Lord, in, in everything that's going on, may we be your light in all that we do. In Jesus' holy and amazing name. Amen. And now here there's this last one this uh, last way we can express thanks to God on Thanksgiving, it's by sharing our testimony. Isaiah 12, 4 says, Thank the Lord. Praise His name. Tell the world about His wonderful love and how mighty He is. You know what a testimony is? A testimony isn't what the lawyer does. It's what the witness does. It's what the witness says. The witness isn't here to convince anybody of anything. There's no pressure for them to... Uh, uh, try and convince them or, or make a decision. All they're asked to do is to come and tell what they saw, what's happened to them and what's happened in their life. Nobody can give your testimony except for you. You're the authority on your life. Nobody else can authoritatively tell your story. If you don't give a testimony, if you personally don't give your testimony about how God has worked in your life, who will ever tell it? Who will ever know how real God was to you or how good God has been to you? God says that one of the ways we give thanks to him is by telling our story, by giving thanks back to God and by telling God how he's worked in our lives and telling others how God's worked in our lives. In Deuteronomy 4.9, it says this, Be careful to never forget what you've seen God doing for you. May his miracles have a deep and permanent effect upon your lives. Tell your children and your grandchildren about the glorious miracles he's, he, he did. Seven weeks ago when we started this sermon series, I said you could expect four things to happen over the next few weeks. You could expect to see some miracles. You can expect to grow spiritually. You can expect to be assled by the devil. And you can expect to experience some joy. So to end this sermon, we're going to end it with a short testimony from someone who is thankful, who is grateful for the things God has done in their life. So today I've asked Sierra Creighton to come and share a small part of her story with us. Sierra? My name is Sierra Creighton. I'm from Clear Lake. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I have been going to Zion off and on since like 2006, I think. 
and I've been going steadily since like the last year, I would say. I will say I'm very grateful that he has worked with me as much as he has in so little time. Um, I don't know how well p other people can see it. I'm sure they can because the change that I feel within me is astounding. Um, even looking back six months ago, I am nowhere near the person that I was. Seeing my life now versus before I like came to Christ. Like I've always been a church follower and a, you know a God follower, but it's different now. Um, and I don't even know how to explain it fully. Um, just looking at the before me and the now me, <laughs> um, it's like I can see things in brighter colors, if that makes sense. I am going through a very tough time um, emotionally and just physically. Um, and I don't feel a lot of love for myself, and I never really have. And he has overwhelmed me with that love nonstop in many ways. Um, I hear him throughout the day telling me how much he loves me um, through Facebook posts and messages that people share. And it might not even have anything to do with it, but he like comes secretly in and he's like, I love you so much. This is me to you. One thing that I'm truly grateful for that we've worked through, I don't know if this is going too far or not, but I am so grateful for the work he's done in my heart with myself. Um, trusting myself with him, like knowing that I'm actually hearing his voice and it's not me being wishy-washy or not knowing what to do. I know that it's him and I'm learning that more and more every day. Um, he called me to get baptized this summer and I was so scared because I knew, you know, that means that I'm, call I'm called to follow him. And I've done that like nonstop, <laughs> even though I feel like I'm not, like I am. Um, he called me to take a really big leap of faith and go out on my own as a single mom. And um, as nervous as it makes me to talk about it, that's a huge, huge leap of faith. And I'm still in it, but uh, I know he's got me and I know he has a huge plan for me and I'm so excited to see where that goes. During this coming week, I'm challenging you to write us at Zion and tell us your story. Tell us what you've learned. The Bible teaches us that this is just another way that we can give back to God. We can give thanks to God by telling God what he's done, what we believe he's done in our life. The Bible says this, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God. The Bible says no matter what it is, everything that you do, you should be grateful. Everything you say should be done and be spoken with an attitude of gratitude. First Thessalonians says, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. If you want to know what God's will is in your life, there it is. Giving thanks in all circumstances. Now it doesn't say for all circumstances, it says in all circumstances. Because there's a lot of things that God doesn't expect you to give thanks for, such as evil in the world. That'd be crazy. But in every circumstance, he says, give thanks. There'll always be bad things, but look for the good and then give thanks for them and give thanks to God for this reason. Because you know that he knows everything. He knows all things. He's got your best purpose in mind. He knows your name. He loves you. He can change the situation that you're in. He's got a purpose behind what he does. In these dark days that are coming ahead, give thanks. Figure out a way to give thanks to God in every circumstance. What I'm talking about this morning is an incredible spiritual power that if you will apply the attitude of gratitude in your life, you will start to see miracles happen on a regular basis. The power of thanksgiving has the power to set you free. Giving thanks will set you free. Whether you're in an emotional prison of fear and anger or anxiety and guilt or bitterness, depression, worry, or a financial prison where you're in bondage to somebody, you're in debt and you can't get out of this mess, 
Or maybe you're in a relational prison where you can't get out of the relationship. You're stuck. So what prison are you in? Whatever it is, give thanks to God that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he has the power to set you free. If you start thanking God in a situation, before the situation's finished, before it's resolved, before the problem is solved, then you'll see the power of God coming down from heaven. And God will start doing things that you can't even imagine. Let's rise for closing prayer. Lord Jesus, we want an attitude of gratitude. May you give that gift to us as we thank you for this Thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, everybody, and may you have a blessed Thanksgiving. God bless you.